Welcome back to the revolution and welcome to cancer season. So we're going to talk a little bit. I have some notes that I made on my phone. So if you'll excuse me, I'll refer back to those as we go through. Let's start with some of the most important transits. So July 5th in just a couple of weeks now, Mars will move into Taurus. Now, before we even talk about that, which is July, let's for a second focus on Venus moving into Gemini because I realized if we're going to talk about Mars and Taurus then we need to talk about the fact that Venus is in Gemini now about two and a half weeks before Mars moves into Taurus. Now why is that important? Well, Venus in Gemini is a time to really let yourself be that version of you that you know you can be, that you sometimes let out when you get loose at a party or when you've done really well and you're feeling very accomplished and very successful. There's a depth to your voice. There's a slight rhythm in your walk. You choose your clothing with more care. You seem to have a bit more levity around you. Everything seems more lighthearted. Everything seems more fun. Your connections really show up for you and help you out and listen to you and hold space for you. And there's no real drama on the horizon. So for the next two weeks of June, you're pretty much assured a really good time and a friendly time. Now, knowing that, on the 5th of July, Mars will move into Taurus. Now, you can be upset about it. You can feel yourself discomforted by it, which is how Taurus feels about Mars. Why are you rushing me? Why are you telling me what to do? Why is there a time limit on this? I like to do things based on how I feel. And you will have those moments in July where you just don't feel like doing something and you're being forced to do it. And the more you fight that, the more you kind of stubbornly dig your heels in and behave like a Taurus dealing with Martian energy, the more you'll find that you aren't happy, that you're you're unhappy about being pushed, but you're more unhappy, let's say about not following through with whatever this Mars energy is trying to bring you to. So a really commonplace example that any Taurus can relate to would be needing to get up out of bed because you have something you need to go do. You could reschedule, but for some reason or another, your gut is just nagging you and really wants you to get up and go. In July, you'll get up and go. You won't be happy about it. You won't be the most joyous person, but when you get there, something will happen and you'll say, oh, that's why I needed to come here. Yeah, so Mars and Taurus is all the stuff we don't wanna be pushed to do, we couldn't be bothered with, we don't see why it's important, it seems a bit dramatic, but then we do it and we're like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. Thank God I got that done. What would I have done if I hadn't been rushed? Now, on July 5th and through the 5th until the 19th, you have Mercury moving into Cancer. So all those people that you are unable to be open with your feelings about, perhaps that's everybody, um, anyone that you wanted to build a bridge to, anyone that you feel is alienated, now, for some of you, this may be a purely psychic endeavor. You don't have to, in the real world, deal with anyone or reach out to anyone or do anything toxic. You can reach out to people in a meditative state. Say you're sitting down for 10 or 15 minutes a day and just closing your eyes and, yeah, centering yourself. It doesn't have to be anything more than that. But in that space, or perhaps right before you go to bed, or perhaps when you're in the bath and you're kind of, you know, just in a dreamy state, Imagine them in your mind, have the conversation with them, but it can't be an argument. It can't be a, you did this, I did this. 
Cancer, Mercury in Cancer is not about blame, even though Cancer is a cardinal sign. Cancer is so cardinal that it is magnanimous. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. The point is we're talking. Okay, so anyone that you really feel alienated from and you just don't, you don't feel comfortable reaching out, that's okay. You can do this in your mind and you will be surprised at how much better it makes you feel, but also how certain results show up in your waking life, right? Okay, well, let's keep going. What happened to my nose? Okay, here we go. So, on the 19th, you have Mercury moving into Leo. And just like, you know, when everything moves into Leo, you have this natural disdain that kind of creeps up on the other side. Now, the reason this is so confusing is because when you have this kind of placement, when you have Mercury and Leo, we're all kind of like Leos. We don't understand why does not there have to be an opposition? Why does there have to be an opposing party? Why can't we all just be happy? Why can't we all be flexy and beautiful and just get on with the business of having fun? Yeah, the more you express that sort of thought process to a certain type of person, the more you exacerbate what it is in them that you're triggering with this sort of thought process. And what is that usually? What's the thought process? The thought process is just let's live, let's have a good time. Your season is coming up, Leo's, and to have Mercury in Leo, it's just, you know, it's a precursor to open-hearted, honest communication, a good time, loyalty, friendship, fun, you know? So of course, there's going to be a subset of the population that's totally alienated and triggered by that. Uh, what to do about it? Mm. I think the only thing you can do, it's something that I've learned from my Vedic Rohini placements. Uh, Rohini placements have a tendency to alienate people because they, not by doing anything in particular, but just by how they are. And I find that there's such a similarity between Rohini placements and Leo's. So when Mercury enters Leo, you'll have at least communication wise, this ability to alienate people by really doing nothing, by just making a really good point or saying something very well or being very eloquent or articulate about something, or perhaps you just look really good saying it. it doesn't matter. There's a sense of superiority that is not intended. And so, it's very hard to tell when you're triggering someone because you have no idea that you're even doing anything. So let this be a little bit of a warning. You know, after the 19th, there are things that you are saying that even though you are not trying to dim anybody else's shine, if you don't go out of your way to compliment and recognize them first, that's how it'll be seen. Now I can hear the Leos and the Taurus is grumbling, you know, all the fixed energies, like why should we have to do that? You don't have to do anything, but just understand that Mercury in Leo is a lot for people to handle. Not everyone is used to having the fervor and the conviction that Mercury in Leo can have. And for those who are more timid or more afraid of their surroundings, to have that sort of roar can be terrifying. And then to watch other people openly roar and have a good time with it, yeah, that could probably be triggering. So we just want to be, you know, and this is the spirit of the season. This is cancer season. We just want to be as understanding, as empathetic as we possibly can. And the, the every man theme that runs through Cancerians is perhaps one of my favorite things of all the signs in the Zodiac. Um, although they are very cardinal, very bossy, very know-it-all. And it's because they usually do know-it-all. They feel it all. There is an extreme humility to cancers. It's hard to talk about without actually getting choked up because it's so beautiful. Cancers see themselves in everyone and they see everyone in themselves, but not in a way that has anything to do with ego. It has to do with service. And there is always this kind of silent hope that whatever they're doing, maybe one day someone will do for theirs. 
So this idea of paying it back, paying it forward, this really does qualify a Cancerian's life. It's how they live, it's how they breathe, it's how they deal with the guilt of having when so many don't have. These are the things that preoccupy a Cancer. They don't have the normal, uh, let's say frivolous needs and goals that most of us can have outside of survival. And I think it's because most often it is Cancerians who are pushed into a situation where they have to survive uh, where they are really like put against the wall and there's nowhere else to go. And so the sort of survival they understand, they can commiserate and empathize with those who are at the very edges, the frays of society. And perhaps that's also where the everyman thing comes from, but it gives Cancerians this edge. There is a street punk edge to Cancerians that very few people have and it's always something kind of hidden you know it's hidden behind a soft beautiful face or it's hidden behind a glowing sweet voice uh, but somewhere in there the edge of that the edge of that shell is you know sharp as a knife that edge it comes from at some point being pushed up against it and you thought your shell would break and instead it fortified. But until that extreme pressure is put on Cancerians, they don't realize that they're what they're made of. Right? We've talked about this. There was a video last year, titanium shell. It's only when that pressure is put upon them that they, right? There's this scene in Devil's Advocate where Al Pacino says, you know, we talked about this, and he's actually talking to a Cancer Moon. Uh, you know, pressure. Do you focus or do you fold? And Cancerians, because they have been in the thick of it, have seen some gruesome stuff, really. They focus. They never fold. So you have this very strong and yet very soft, hard as titanium, gentle as the foam of the sea, paradox going on in July. Add to that Add to that the loud roar of Mercury in Leo, and you can see how some problems can arise give people their space shine you're supposed to shine that's but sometimes other people they're afraid to shine when you shine because their shine may not be good enough in the presence of yours and even though it's not your job if you go stand next to them and light them up a bit they'll shine brighter and you won't be any less dimmed. So um, try it. You don't have to, it's not your job, but I guarantee you, and I vouch for this with personal experience, any person that you help a rung up with their self-worth, the feeling that you get when they look at you and you can tell <laughs> that they actually feel better about themselves and all you had to do was go stand by them or pay attention to them or smile with them or tell them they're doing a great job or tell them they look great. That moment when somebody lights up because they are seen in this wide, ever expanding, infinite universe that changes every second while we're barreling at light speeds through the universe. For a millisecond, somebody sees them and is all about them and appreciates them. So 
the way they just bloom. It is its own reward, but if you are a risk versus reward oriented person, I will also say this. Every time you do that for someone, they're not gonna hand you money. They're not gonna do anything that's going to be financially beneficial to you. But that energy that you gave them, it'll come back. And it'll come back when you need it most. When you need to bloom. When someone needs to see you. So if you are in the business of being seen or in a business where being seen is really important, I can tell you that the best thing you can do for yourself is to really see others. Notice them, appreciate them, lift them up when you can. Again, this is the spirit of service. This is cancer season. It can't be helped. It, um, it takes over us. I think Gemini season is so solitary. That's why I like Venus and Gemini. It's not solitary at all. Gemini season is so solitary and so analytical and maybe you guys got a little taste of it this time around, but it is terribly hard to be a Gemini because the truth telling and the truth revealing, it's always just a sucker punch. It's, <laughs> it's never pleasant. So we spent most of Gemini season just reeling from the truths we were being hit with. And then the rest of the time, I guess, recuperating from it and hiding. And now comes the time of the shell. Well, this is a shell you can count on. This is a shell you can trust. A Gemini is a, a lone wolf looking for a tree to stand under while it's raining. You know, notebook in hand, scribbling some poetry as the rain washes the words away. Cancer is a home and a hearth and a warm meal and a warm bed and someone who knows what you need when you get sick. Cancer is, you know, cancer season is come out of the cold, come out from under that tree. I know what you're writing in that book and I know what you need. And so we, these kind of wayward, abandoned poets, we find ourselves being welcomed in to a super solid structure. Safe from the rain and the wind and the hurt and the pain because that's how cancers do. What do you do with that? I mean, some of us haven't felt that sort of security for almost a year. It is very possible to just lay down in it and forget and not do a thing. As every indulgent mother will let you do. <laughs> and before you know it, the season will be gone. And maybe some of us need that. Maybe some of us do need to just lay down and heal. I'm not opposed to it. But there is so much that you can get done, so much you can understand. Sure, come in out of the cold. Let yourself be nurtured, let yourself be cared for. Honor your own impulses to care and beautify yourself. But you know that icky feeling you start to get when you overindulge in something? Listen to that. Let it guide you. When you start to feel like, oh, this is too much, I should probably get up, get up. And when you get up, there's going to be a bunch of transits waiting for you. So let's get to them. The sun moves into Leo. Excuse me while I drink something. Oh, we're having a New York event. It's on August 14th. The tickets will be below. But it's very limited seating. The sun moves into Leo July 22nd, and what I have written down in my notes here is it's time to get in character. So if you remember a couple of months back, I told Leos that they really had to invest in some clothing for some what-if moments. So when that great opportunity comes around, or that great night out, or that great date, you don't have to think like, what am I going to wear? You have something waiting in your closet. So their season of manifestation began a couple of months ago, and now it's coming to fruition. <clears throat> excuse me, inshallah, as Leo season hits, it's like the movie reel starts. 
all these kind of fantastical things start happening, encounters, and you know, you're dressed for it, and there's some drama, and there can be some romance, but you do walk out of your house every day if you feel good about yourself to begin with, uh, feeling like the main character, right? So Queen Herbie has that main character energy song. It's like, that's, that's Leah's season. <laughs> that's Leah's season. And again, if you are in any way alienated by the idea of main character energy or you don't like people who feel themselves at the center of their own lives, this can be a really irritating time of year and no one's gonna stop because you know leo season the sun was into leo on july 22nd it's like everyone gets drunk on it most people never have access to that kind of power or that kind of confidence and so to have it for you know just about 30 days people don't know what to do with it so it's not just that the leos get out of control because the leos know how to handle their shit um I was just mentioning Bobby De Niro in a podcast about, I, I went and saw Al Pacino and Bobby De Niro do a panel discussion on Heat, uh, which is one of my favorite films. And it was a birthday gift from a friend. Thank you, Crystal. Um, and I was talking about how Leos are so self-possessed. In the podcast episode about it, I was talking about how Leos are so self-contained. You know, the Leos can handle Leo season. It's everybody else who's just you know has access to an energetic drug that they could never handle and then it's like free access to all of it however much they want and they're you know keenly aware that it'll be gone in a month so get it while it's hot um j just to play advocate for the leos most of the people that will be irritating you in leo season are not leos leos and leo season are too busy you know being leos Okay, that's not a bad thing, they're just busy. That's always my first line of defense and approach with anyone who seems to have a problem with the Leo. That's just what I do from now on. I'm like, are you sure they know about this? Because I think they're busy. Now, on July 22nd, now that you have the Sun in Leo, you have Mercury in Leo, so the Sun and Mercury will square Mars in Taurus, and that'll be from the 22nd onward that this will be happening. So it gets really easy to lose your temper. It's really easy to get into fights about nothing that turn into very, very bad fights about something. But it started from nothing and it's unnecessary. It's not like a fight that starts over nothing, like burnt toast syndrome, right? It's not like it starts over nothing and then you're like, I'm unhappy, I want a divorce. It's not like that. It's really about nothing, but then all of a sudden it continues to be about nothing in such a terrible way that, you know, you ever have those fights that you're like, yeah, nothing will be the same again after this? Not even because of what we fought about. Not even because of the way you were just looking at me. And I don't even know what is this look. I don't even know who this is. Not even that. But that one thing you said five sentences ago, that I'm never going to forgive. That is that type of shit. So let's just not do it. Let's not do it. It's cancer season. And, you know, I have cramps. <laughs> And I just got my period. Sorry. Sorry. We're all friends here. We're all adults. Let's just deal with it. Now, it's what I have written here is it's too easy to ruin good things. And I just want to talk to you about that for a second. Because we don't have a very good grasp on Leo energy, when you start to experience that level of abundance and good luck, it's easy to spiral because you don't know what to do with it. It's easy to ruin good things when you're not used to having so much of it, if that makes sense, right? So what do you do? Well, one of the easiest ways is to understand that every single good thing that's coming your way as of late July is some karmic debt that's being paid to you but you know you still shouldn't act like it's owed to you if you can be humble while still retaining in your mind the knowledge that i know what this is a payback for actually i know why this happened and not be entitled about it i think you figure out the key to leo season 
It's about being as open and honest and grateful and excited about everything you get as you can be. And yet not, and being completely surprised at the same time, like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. This is amazing. And not ever taking it for granted and not ever taking it as a foregone conclusion or a given. I think that's the key to understanding Leo season. Whereas cancer season is very much about, you know, what lies beneath going underneath and what do you like when you get beaten up by the waves and what what parts of you need this saline what parts of you need to heal what are we doing here what are we talking about you know cancer season every i we were talking on the Zaw walk the other day that's on patreon now about cancer season like cancers get into your shit i'm a cancer rising like you know don't tell me you have a problem Because either I know somebody or I know somebody who knows somebody who has a solution for that or I read something that could probably help you or you know what, why don't we look it up together because I also have this one friend. Matter of fact, why don't we call him? Because the thing is, you shouldn't have a problem. I, I We can fix this problem. What kind of problem is it? Right? You move into Leo energy and Leos are like, gosh darn, this is amazing. I'm having the best time ever. <laughs> you know? And you're like, I, I have a problem. And they're like, gosh darn, this is amazing. And I'm having the best time ever. You know, and you're like, yes, me too. Yeah, aren't you also having the best time ever? Still have this problem. You know, gosh darn, this is the best feeling. You know, and you're just like, we get into Leo season and we're like, I miss cancer season. You know, because there's not one group of people doing all the heavy lifting. The people who get past the torch don't want to do any heavy lifting of all, at all, of any kind. And why should they? Who are you? So, <laughs> so it takes a little adjusting to, and it's easy to ruin good things. Now, can you see why? Because you're used to someone holding your hand, nurturing you, thinking for you, feeling for you, figuring it out for you. And then all of a sudden you get to Leo season. It's like the training, training wheels are off and I'm not your chaperone either. I don't even know who you are. Good luck, kid. And you're like, ah, you know, and I want to make this somebody's fault now because I want someone to still be taking care of me. It's not a pleasant weaning process from cancer to Leo season. Let's put it that way. And then we have the North Node in Taurus, right? And we have Uranus and the North Node conjunction in Taurus between the 27th of July and to August 11th. They're huge, disruptive changes. And maybe they wouldn't be so bad because they are necessary and it does need to happen. It needs to happen. It's for your well being. But it wouldn't be so. <sighs> suspenseful and frightening if it wasn't Uranus. If it wasn't this completely chaotic energy whose answer to everything is let's, you know, wipe the table and start again. Like, there is such a extremism to Uranus energy. You see it in Aquarius. There is this abstract, you know, insistence on the abstract solution. <laughs> so you may find between the 27th and August on, so right at the end of July, you may find that things start to happen that in the abstract you can look at and be like, okay, yeah, I can see how it needed to happen. But then you look at the specifics of what's going on in your life and like, what the fuck, this sucks. Like, why did it have to happen like this? Uranus, we don't know. It does what it wants, we don't know. We don't know. Now, these huge overhauls, in some way or another, don't panic because you've been preparing for them already. All year up until now, you've been kind of preparing for them. You know what's coming. You've had some indications already. If you're one of those people that's got your head stuck in the sand, I suggest you use this Venus and Gemini energy for the next two weeks of June to get yourself unstuck and look around because I guarantee you the damage that you are doing to yourself by not paying attention to it is way worse than paying attention to it and going, hmm, there's nothing I can do about this. You know how liberating that is to just look at something and be like, mom, that's what it was. That letter you're avoiding, that appointment, that email you're not opening, that text you're not answering. Do what, what you're doing now is so much more stressful than just dealing with it, looking at it, even if, you, even if the consequence of looking at it is, wow, I really don't know what to fucking do. Even that's okay. 
but having that tab open with that anxiety running really bad especially if you're neurodivergent. So these changes are disruptive and chaotic, but don't let that make you think that it's for nothing. It may feel unnecessary. It may feel foolish. It may feel like really why, why like this? Why does it, but there is a deep, deep purpose and it's something that you need to figure out. So there's only good intentions behind this. Try to remember that when things start to go a little bit left. Right. Some of these realizations are things that life has been trying to teach you one way or another for a while and you haven't really been listening. You haven't really been understanding. You've been, you know, <laughs> you know, you've been ignoring. Okay. For some of you, this is a really interesting time of completion that comes after like a nine, 10 year cycle. Some of you have waited nine, 10 years just for this to happen because it's like your tower moment gets untowered. So it's not all bad. It's not, none of it is bad actually, but your perception of it won't be all bad either. For many of you, there is this deep sense of fruition. Like, wow, I didn't think that this was actually possible all these years later, but it's what I secretly, you know, wanted this whole time. And in you know end of July you start to you start to get it you move into August and you're like hey it happened you know so it's not all bad and once you figure out whatever this realization is whatever this thing is that you need to learn once you figure it out one of the things that you're gonna feel heavy is like well why didn't I know this before why didn't I figure this out before you know if I knew this before I could have saved myself this I could have saved myself time money this and that yeah that doesn't do anything for anybody unless you're just into punishing yourself. But in that case, you know, you could be having fun with that. Why just do that to yourself? And if you really want to beat yourself up or you want some, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a dark joke. Okay, anyway. So, it's hard. This is what I wrote here. It's hard to think straight when Uranus is fucking with your sense of security and safety in cancer season. So cancer season is a lot about safety and security. Just You're being welcomed in, you know, from the cold, from the rain, from this Gemini solitude. You know, you know this about Geminis. No matter how well you know us, there's always this feeling of like not knowing us at all, that distance, that intellectual isolation and distance that we keep from people. It's, it's, we're ripped out of that in cancer season. Come in, get warm, tell me all about your stuff, tell me your problems, tell me your fears and dreams, you know? And, and, and since everyone kind of turns into a Gemini during Gemini season, we're all like, what? No, I'm fine. You ever notice that Geminis do that the most? It's like the one thing we say the most, we're like, I'm fine. Because I can't go, I'm fine just means I can't even begin to explain how uncomfortable I am for how many different reasons. And if I tried to tell you, you would think I was really weird. So I'm fine. Okay. So you invite this person in, you get them comfortable, you get them warm, you get them trusting you. We all, you know, shed our Gemini skin and we're getting into this home, hearth and mom and medicine and food and warmth and love. We're all the way in it. We start to get real comfortable in it. And here comes the North Node and Uranus and Taurus. Just shaking the whole shell from the outside. And Cancer season inside the shell is like, hey, don't worry, we're in the shell. And you're like, yeah, this is not my shell. I'm not used to being in a shell. I don't even know if this thing holds up to safety standards. This seems like we're in a tornado outside. Are we going to Oz? What's going, you know, and some of us are going to get to Oz and be like, really? This was the answer to my problems? Oz, you know? And we'll walk around a little and we'll meet some people and we'll be like, oh my God, this is exactly what I needed to understand because I've been given this lesson so many times and I just wasn't getting it. And then Uranus comes up with a, uh, inventive ways to get through to you and thank god that it does and that's the thing you have to remember uh through this whole season is that no matter how 
useless and unnecessary something may seem like cancerians themselves everything means something and it means something very deliberate and deep hmm? i love when the cancerians the piscians the scorpions they do the deep dives on the video oh she's wearing white and she's got this and this around her and and other people will comment i don't think it's that deep no it definitely is <laughs> it definitely is there is nothing um, arbitrary with cancerians everything is deliberate everything is deep and everything is meaningful um colors textures the way we look at you the way we smile at you the way we talk to you the tone of our voice the volume at which we speak to you everything is determined by an extreme sensitivity and a desire above all to nurture and heal and protect you and so it's easy to feel midway through as if you have been betrayed by mother, betrayed by cancer season. Why is this shell shaking? You told me I was safe in here. So I'm here to tell you that even when you're laying in that bed, getting warm and maybe a little too comfortable, just remember, <laughs> Uranus is barreling down the road and it'll be here before you know it. So get comfortable, let yourself be nurtured, let yourself heal, but don't forget for a moment what's coming up ahead. And if there is any benefit to astrology at all, it would be that. It would be knowing the seasons that are coming, being able to look at this huge clock in the sky and understand that certain faces of this clock when they point a certain way, mean a certain thing. And so if we know what's coming, we can mentally be prepared. The shock that you would get if you got completely comfortable and started to believe the hype that, yeah, nothing can hurt me in here. You know, if you started to believe that hype, then the North Node Uranus thing is really gonna fuck with you. But the truth is, aside from the cancer, Everybody else is unsafe in that shell. It's their shell. They're completely safe in there. That's why Cancerians act the way they do. Haven't you ever noticed? What's the one thing, if you think about, if you think about a Cancerian in your mind, you'll notice the eyes. Yes, the shape. Yes, the wateriness of the eyes, but it's something more than just large watery eyes. Cancerians have a look in their eye. They're stronger than you. And they know it. And they make sure you know it. But it's also very friendly and subtle. So it's not like they're trying to flex on you. They're just trying to make sure you understand. The reason they look like that is because in their shell, nobody can hurt them. What hurts cancers is betrayal. What hurts cancers is when they let people in their shell. But you, you being in their shell, can you still get hurt? Absolutely, right? So when you're in there and you're feeling great or whatever situation comes up in your life and you're like, oh my God, this is wonderful. I couldn't feel any better than this. Remember, that's not your shell. It feels great, soak it up. But in a couple of weeks, it's gonna be go time. And whatever you already know, while we've just been talking, that's sparking in your mind, yeah, that thing I haven't really thought about and I should think about and this thing, start getting on it now. Let's see how much of this we can get in front of. You know? Why, why have to do the damage control when you already know and you can get on top of things, so get on top of them. Right? Now the all signs, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put it on Patreon. So it will be over there. There's a link to the Patreon below. I will put it on the early videos tier um, so everyone can have access to it for the lowest tier, if you would like. And um, <coughs> it's, aside from that, New York event, tickets are up for August 14. Tickets are sold out just about for LA. I put up 15 more tickets last night. I think there's five left. And I was thinking about tickets for the Bay. What do you guys think? Love you. I'll see you in the All Signs video.